critics. You know what I call them? My beloved enemies. I love them when they say something good about me. I hate them when they say something bad. No one likes a bad review. I don't. Ball players don't. But they learn to live with them because they're subject to a new review, good or bad, every single night. Oh boy, hubby. That boy, Donnie, nice job. That boy, Ralphie. Boy, you can catch the ball. You can't hit that son. You can catch it. You know that? Okay. The first half of any ball game is played out on the field. The second half is played out in the clubhouse fielding questions instead of grounders. The people that I have the least amount of patience for is that they ask me questions that they got to know in their heart that I'm not going to know how to answer. You know, like a guy asked me here last night in San Diego why I thought that their attendance was down. Well, yeah, maybe they got a fat lady caught in a turnstiles. I don't know. Maybe somebody's calling in a bomb threat or something. I don't know. <laughs> For the most part, ball players and writers peacefully coexist. Basically, they're the lowest form on earth. And another thing I think is that uh, they, they try to start trouble all the time. There are very few good ones, really, <laughs> around that, that you're able to even put up with. There are some good ones that try to do a good job. Basically, they're just trying to get under your skin. And uh, I think that they're a bunch of low life. Uh, I'm going to start treating them like that if I feel that way. So, well, I think some guys honestly do feel that way, and some of them think that uh, we don't know what we're talking about. Uh, that we're just frustrated jocks or whatever. But as far as I'm concerned, my interest in baseball has been every bit as uh, passionate as theirs. I love this game just as much as they do. They just they play it, and I just happen to be able to watch it. Mortensen says players take the press too seriously. If his words have any power or hold sway with a team's management, it's a power he doesn't want. Don't take us that seriously because I don't take us that seriously, other than the fact that I'm not doing the job and it's a day-by-day -day thing. And you, every day you go out there and you try to give your readers something special to read. And it doesn't always turn out that well, but you're not making it up. And I think that uh, the players on this team need to be educated and I don't think this the Braves front office has done a very good job of it. We don't have to learn or just how to just a Mortensen. If he's working for the paper. He needs to learn how to just us. He comes to us after a loss when we're hurt and asks us a stupid question. Whether or not they get along, without the press there's no daily contact between ball players and their public and that's important. Contact. A scrawled autograph, a handshake, and if a fan is real lucky, a baseball player may even talk to them. Okay, here's something about the ball. You know, we didn't do, I didn't do, show you a lot of technique, but a lot of things about baseball that you, that you need to learn how to play catch. That's something that's very fundamental in this game that we're having trouble doing right now as a team. You need to be able to play catch, and, and don't be afraid of the baseball. You know, when you grow up, they say, well, oh, don't be afraid of the ball because if it hits you, it won't hurt. Well, that doesn't make any sense because it does hurt when you get hit by the ball. I know that it does. So, but don't be afraid of it because it only hurts for a little bit, and then you get a lot of sympathy from your girlfriends. You know, no big deal. Oh, you don't have one? Well, you will someday. It's big Whatever leaguers that, uh, meeting the kids face to face. Uh, one thing that I've learned, There's a lot of adoration in those eyes, and if they listen carefully, they might even pick up a thing or two about baseball. Uh, everybody knows what this is called here. Okay. You know what it is? Tell me what it's called. Bullpen. Bullpen. Why is it called the bullpen? Because we all sit down here and say a lot of bull to each other. It doesn't mean anything. Okay? Baseball is important to me. It's afforded me a lot of things, my individuals. But I, I don't put it all in one basket anymore, you know. I've got two children that I don't get to see very much, and I really like the time that I have with them. and. And, you know, and I like feeling about them, and I, guy, and I like guy, forming nine. relationships with people. And I do some public guy, speaking, nine. and I do some clinics, and I referee guy, basketball. Right so some, you can really uh, narrow baseball down and live or die with it, but a lot of people do, but like I don't anymore. Oh, no, the smile, and now I'm saying your ball, now you're smiling. Kids and ball players, it's a natural. It's sure a pretty dress you got there. Pretty low. Uh, what is this? What do you call it? A suit? A suit? Oh, it's a suit. Oh. Where'd you get it? Where? Oh, I'll have to go and get me one. Now, what size is that? Small, medium, or large? A 6X? 
stay with us for the next three hours. Terry, welcome to the show. Nice to have you back. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to be here. Now, we, uh, last... The radio call-in show. What better way to rag a player without getting punched in the nose? Now the ultimate question. What's a reliever feel like when the Western Division's on the line? Little Joe Morgan's up to play. Uh-oh. Here's Terry's favorite subject. The home run that's haunted him since he became a brave. Uh, next question, please. we got time for one more. No, you know, uh, the whole thing that people don't understand is that... Uh, now, I made the mistake, but... Now, I got them, uh, the Dodgers, to three World Series, um, you know, four to di divisional playoffs have been, and uh, I never hear anything about that. It's always that one home run. But, you know, I made a mistake on it. I made a bad pitch, but if anybody had to win, I'm glad it was Atlanta. Listen, we appreciate it. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Miss Foster. Yes. Uh, I'm an old woman, but I'm a brave fan. Oh, that's great. And uh, pitching is the name of the game. Ain't it? Uh, Do you have any pointers for me? I beg your pardon? Do you have any pointers for me then? Well, uh, not at this stage of the game. You see, when I was in elementary school, I was one hell, I mean, whale of a pitcher. <laughs> when I got in high school, uh -huh. parents wouldn't let me because you can't pitch without showing your bloomers. Oh. <laughs> so I had to quit. Oh, that's a shame. Hey, I know it is. I know, we, we probably could have been playing against each other sometime. That's right. <laughs> Yes, everyone likes to talk with ball players. You know, let's just assume that it's a more crucial game, that it's against uh, whoever it is who you'd much prefer to beat. And uh, an action, fellas! It's the morning before a game with the Houston Astros, and the phone company wants to shoot a commercial using real-life baseball players. If they only knew what they were getting themselves into. This is more than your basic 10-second, uh, you know, watch the Braves or listen to the Braves on W-E-Z-E -E on, uh, you know, some radio station. So this is, involves a little bit more, a little more production and uh, technical stuff. I think the players kind of like it. Bruce Benedict, catcher and uh, baseball technical advisor. You might need him closer to the bag or walking across the foul After line. the guy crosses After his bag, he would take a walk towards the dugout. He would take a dugout. walk towards the dugout. That would be more realistic. Yeah, right and then walk there, right and across the line towards across. the dugout. Slowly. You know, they're just relying on my baseball expertise here to, to set up these real-life baseball situations. You don't want any, uh, you know, phony commercials on here. They're unbelievable for the people. You know, we're trying to, you know, sell phones or something, you know, whatever it is. This boy definitely belongs on the other side of the camera. You know the Braves, <clears throat> check him out. You know we're going to work. We can only fill up one section. <laughs> check him out. <laughs> sweat on those people. <laughs> Where's the sweat lady? We need some sweat on those people. <laughs> In this fantasy land of film, Brad Cummins hits the home run that wins the game in the ninth inning. But real life proved a little tougher. Just nice and glide and nice and easy. Like you're listening to nice music and all of a sudden scratches. Explodes. Life serves up very few fat pitches. Brad comments struggled to keep his head above water and his batting average above 200. Advice came cheap. You have to be a spring, just starting to coil and then, pfft, you know, and you don't pfft until you start your hands. You know, I just couldn't find any timing, you know, doing the things that I was, you know, I was working on. And even when I when I did find and have a good game, it seemed like, you know, something else was wrong and they tried to change something else. And, what they were trying to do is find me a good stroke, but, uh, you know, I really think mine in the past was good enough. Still, Brad enjoyed the life of a big league ball player in a big league town. Oh, yeah. How you doing? What are the tank top? Tremendous. No? Oh, okay. Like, you can be selective. <laughs> Okay, so we had a little trouble with big league pitching. But Brad could spot a curve in the stands a mile away. 